Welcome PCS members and friends to our today's uh, IBS PCS Thursday seminar. Uh, it is a great pleasure to have with us uh, today, uh, Professor Anton Nalitov from University of Wolverhampton. And I would like to invite our scientific host, uh, Sergei Konyakin to introduce our speaker. Please, Sergei. Hello. Hello, everyone. So uh, before we start, uh, a few words about, uh, about Anton. So we are knowing each other uh, 20 years, it is true. So we have finished together the school from the age of 12 of uh, uh, something like this. Then we have uh, together start, uh, started in the university. Uh, or you, the physical technical faculty in the St. Petersburg. Uh, and uh, then after, after his master, Anton has moved to a very nice French city in the very center of France, Clermont-Ferrand, where he has worked uh, on uh, uh, polaritons, uh, on topological polaritonics with uh, Dr. Malpesh and Dr. Solnishkov. And uh, after his PhD in 2015, he has moved to Southampton, where he, he has worked with uh, Alexei Kavokin. Uh, and uh, uh, then uh, he worked uh, in, uh, in St. Petersburg in Itmo University. And now he also works in uh, the University of Wolverhampton as uh, assistant professor. And uh, again, his main topic is topological polaritonics and uh, polariton condensates. So let, let us start. Uh, Anyong Haseyong, everyone. Uh, and uh, thank you, Sergey, for a kind introduction. Uh, so indeed, uh, I am based uh, at the University uh, of uh, Wolverhampton. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with the geography of the United Kingdom, you may have uh, heard about this place if you are following uh, football, namely the Premier League, because the local team is playing in the, uh, in the Premier League, the, uh, the highest top level uh, league, and uh, they are playing there. Uh, this is the stadium, and this is my office there. I can hear it, uh, hear it roaring sometimes, and this is uh, the campus. Uh, yes, so uh, this is where our, uh, our uh, research group, Wolverhampton Light and Matter, is uh, located. And I also keep uh, strong uh, scientific ties and collaborations with uh, ITMO University uh, in uh, St. Petersburg, where I am originally from. So today, my goal is to uh, convince you that uh, this uh, uh, tra optically trapped polariton uh, condensates are uh, fundamentally peculiar, uh, unique in many ways, and uh, fun to play with. And for that, uh, I'm going to overview several works uh, and um, separate. Uh, my plan is to separate this talk into three parts. First, I'll give you an introduction to exciton polariton condensates, uh, which I, I've recently realized is maybe not necessary because recently you've had a, a nice introduction on fluids, superfluids uh, in, uh, in optical microcavities two weeks ago. Uh, but for those of you who haven't seen it, uh, I will uh, introduce this, uh, this system. And then the, in the rest, the rest of the talk will be separated into two parts on uh, single optical traps and coupled uh, traps and trap lattices. So let me uh, begin the introduction uh, by describing the, uh, the material platform, the device, uh, the actual system where uh, the physics uh, described in the following uh, talk will, be, will take place. Uh, so it's, uh, it's called planar microcavities. And uh, generally, by default, I will refer to I will refer to gallium arsenide uh, heterostructures uh, consisting of 
two uh, DBRs, distributed Bragg reflectors, uh, and uh, a cavity in between the two uh, with uh, Fabry Perot uh, optical modes uh, and uh, several quantum wells uh, placed at the maxima of the electric field of this mode. Uh, so uh, this system can absorb uh, in uh, external uh, photons illuminate, uh, by illuminated light. Uh, and these photons are, uh, uh, are localized more or less confined between the two, uh, between the two reflectors. And then uh, in turn, this uh, localized confined uh, photonic modes, fo confined photons can be uh, absorbed uh, at quantum wells in form of uh, excitons. And then uh, again, by default, by excitons, I will mean the ground state uh, of an electron hole system, a hydrogen-like uh, state uh, that is called vanier mott exciton. Uh, which is two-dimensional and it's formed by an electron in the conduction band and the heavy hole in the valence band of a quantum well. Now these excitons have finite lifetime and in turn they can be re-emitted back uh, to the photonic mode. And in the classical description this process uh, happens in an oscillating manner. Uh, excitons and photons are emitted uh, re and re-emitted but uh, on the quantum, at the quantum level, which is more correct, uh, we should speak of the mixed states of uh, photon uh, and exciton uh, with uh, certain coefficients that is typically referred to as exciton polariton, so simply uh, polariton. And then, uh, so interestingly, we can uh, uh, witness uh, the physics of what's happening uh, inside uh, the cavities, this two-dimensional gas of uh, exciton polaritons uh, in physics, including uh, superfluidity, uh, topological, uh, topological physics, or a quantum or classical turbulence. Uh, we can judge uh, about the physics of, uh, of it by the uh, emission of photons that uh, uh, eventually uh, leave the micro cavity when the spolariton is emitted outside of the cavity. All right, so the simplest model that uh, captures this uh, strong light matter coupling is uh, known as the coupled oscillator, uh, oscillators model, uh, and it is described in terms of a two by two Hamiltonian with uh, the two energies of uncoupled modes. Uh, exciton and uh, photon. Uh, both are described with uh, their effective masses, uh, with uh, the effective mass of uh, phot photonic mode being much less, uh, much lower. So the photon is much lighter than the exciton. Uh, and then there is this coupling parameter, which is uh, governed by the overlap of uh, the uh, electric field of the mode with uh, uh, with uh, excitons, with uh, quantum wells, uh, known as Rabi splitting and diagonalizing this Hamiltonian, which is, uh, which is a trivial, you get the uh, two branches, lower polariton branch here that has the S shape. And uh, given that the detuning between the two modes is uh, as, uh, as sketched here, it's negative. And the upper polariton mode. So by default, uh, we will uh, we will be interested in the uh, in this uh, lower polariton branch and uh, what's happening there, namely, uh, polariton condensation happens in uh, the lower polariton branch, and uh, this is the typical scenario. Uh, experimentally, you can uh, create these exciton polaritons by uh, pumping. Uh, electron hole pairs in an incoherent uh, manner, either electrically or optically. And then these electron hole pairs with uh, high energies, this hot gas eventually uh, relaxes in energy, forms uh, excitons, and these excitons in turn uh, relax in energy down the lower polariton branch. And somewhere uh, close to in the vicinity of this crossing point, 
uh, inflection point of the dispersion, uh, the process of relaxation slows down significantly. So it almost stops. And this is known as the bottleneck effect. There are reasons for that, including the density of states and the fact that, uh, uh, that uh, here in this part, the dispersion is more photonic, which means that the interactions are reduced. So overall, uh, the stationary state uh, uh, is um, uh, of this uh, incoherently pumped system can be described in terms of uh, uh, incoherent classical uh, reservoir. Uh, and uh, it is described with kinetic equations of the type of uh, uh, Boltzmann equation. And in the simplest approximation, you can describe it with, uh, uh, with uh, the density NR. Uh, and uh, uh, the, this density follows the rate, a simple rate equation. Uh, on the other hand, and this is crucial, above a certain critical density, uh, there is a, 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 a coherent condensate that typically forms at the bottom of this, uh, of this uh, dispersion branch due to uh, spontaneous scattering first due to spontaneous and then due to stimulated scattering from the reservoir into uh, into this uh, bottom uh, onto the bottom of uh, lower polarity branch. Now, as this state is coherent and it's a bosonic condensate because these particles are bosons, uh, it is described with a wave function psi rather than a classical density, and uh, it is described in terms of uh, uh, non-linear Schrodinger or gross Pitayevsky uh, equation, uh, which is on top of that. Uh, uh, so it has the regular kinetic and uh, uh, potential energy terms. Also the interactions due to exciton exciton scattering, uh, typically repulsion, uh, and non-Hermitian complex uh, parts to the uh, to the uh, to the potential uh, due to uh, gain from the reservoir, scattering from the reservoir, and losses uh, due to emission of polaritons outside of the cavity. Uh, so this condensate typically uh, evolves at uh, much shorter uh, time scales. Uh, uh, and by the way, I forgot to mention uh, that depending on uh, the characteristic uh, time scales of thermalization and the lifetime, so gamma is the inverse lifetime, and uh, uh, tau uh, is the thermalization rate, uh, thermalization time. Uh, we can deal with either a Bose-Einstein condensate, which is a perfectly equilibrium system, or in the opposite limit uh, of uh, short lifetime, a laser-like, perfectly uh, in uh, non-equilibrium state. By default, I will refer to this laser state. Uh, Professor Nalitov, we, we have a question uh, yep. from Sung Jong. Very good, please. Oh, I, uh, I'm just wondering, uh, could you could you remind me of like what the x-axis of the uh, the plot is? Ah, I didn't indicate them. Okay, so that's the wave vector. The horizontal axis is the wave vector, and the vertical is the energy. So it's uh -huh. basically the same graph as here. It's the energy dispersion law of uh, exciton polarities. Uh, okay, I see. Okay, yep, thank you. All right. So um, uh, then uh, these systems, these two systems, uh, reservoir and condensate, are coupled, and uh, it is reflected in the coupling of the two equations. As uh, the condensate typically evolves much at much faster uh, time scales than the reservoir, we are free to. Uh, uh, to find uh, the uh, quasi-stationary reserve of density for a condensate by putting the time uh, derivative to zero and expressing an R, quasi-stationary reserve of density, and then uh, plugging it into the equation, into the gross pitayevsky equation. And this results in the uh, uh, generalized uh, non-Hermitian complex gross, uh, gross pitayevsky uh, equation uh, with decoupled uh, from the uh, reservoir. I should also mention uh, the spin structure of uh, exciton polaritons. It will be important in this story. 
so it is inherited from the uh, from that of excitons on the one hand and photons on the other hand. Uh, it is uh, sufficient to say that uh, excitons, at least in the gallium uh, arsenide uh, quantum wells, uh, have the two possible uh, states uh, plus with uh, spin projections plus and minus one that are coupled to uh, photon spin states plus or minus one, which uh, results in polarity states also with two allowed projections of spin. So two uh, spin states uh, and as uh, usual any a uh, two-level system can be described in terms of a pseudo-spin or in terms of a vector on a block sphere. So we will uh, refer, uh, we will use this uh, notion of uh, pseudo-spins uh, uh, as describing the spin state of the system, of, the, of this two-level system. Uh, for this particular story, uh, it will be less important, but I also wanted to mention that uh, this spin structure, uh, this, uh, this pseudo-spin may be uh, manipulated uh, in cavities with the help of the uh, TETM -E uh, splitting, which is present and uh, uh, naturally present in uh, optical micro cavities. And uh, it is also uh, stated in terms of uh, the effective TETM field, which is K-dependent, or in terms of the uh, additional uh, term uh, in the, this time, spinor gross pitayevsky uh, equation uh, on the uh, two components of uh, the wave function. All right, so we have all the ingredients uh, set and we can uh, finally optically trap uh, our uh, condensate, non-equilibrium condensates. Uh, so optical trap is typically something like that, uh, where you optically uh, uh, excite incoherently uh, the system, the cavity from the top uh, onto a ring-like uh, shape. And uh, you create an excitonic uh, reservoir, more or less excitonic, right, at, the, at this bottleneck of the dispersion. So the reservoir has the uh, shape of the, uh, of the ring. And then interestingly, the condensate is specially uh, separated. From the uh, from the reservoir, Name, namely it is uh, in it forms inside this ring, and it is confined on the one hand and fed uh, created by uh, stimulated scattering uh, from the reservoir on the other hand. And uh, well, you can describe this in terms of uh, effective potential that is created due to reservoir. Then again, because of the exit on exit on repulsion, there is this effective potential uh, that is confining uh, polariton states. And uh, then again, typically, uh, the highest energy, uh, con the highest confined energy mode uh, is at the same time, uh, it at the same time corresponds to the highest gain because it overlaps. Uh, the most with the reservoir. So the condensate uh, forms uh, at, the, at this excited state of the, uh, of the trap rather than in the ground state as uh, one that typically expects from equilibrium systems. This is how it uh, looks in experiment. Uh, so depending on the size and the ellipticity of uh, this uh, uh, excitation traps, uh, you can get different uh, wave functions uh, of uh, exciton polariton condensates that you can literally see with almost naked eye. All right, so uh, then uh, this is the this is the setup. Uh, what uh, what uh, interesting effects uh, can one get uh, here? Uh, one of the most, Sergey, uh, there is a question. Yes, uh, please. Could you move to the previous slide? Mm -hmm. So. Uh, so it see it seems uh, a bit strange for me that uh, for the for the panels I and J uh, the the states are very elongated. Yeah, this is due to the ellipticity of the trap. I I think yeah that's 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 the or do you mean something else? 
but, you refer to the uh, shape of the... So it's not a perfect ring, right? It's more of a, a, an ellipse. And then, uh, uh, well, you can picture it as a box, right? In the, in the, case, in the case of a rectangular quantum box, uh, the two quantum numbers that describe the states are the uh, x and nx and ny. So the yes. motion along the two axes uh, is uh, separated. And then you have uh, the number of nodes for the wave function in this direction, which is what? Uh, three in this case, right? So the, this is the mode nx, ny equals three and nx equals zero. Okay, so anyway, the states are separated not by energy of the states, but but only by the overlap with the, with the profile of a reservoir. Both, both at the same time. So you must account for both uh, the Hermitian uh, physics of uh, or the Hermitian contribution to the potential and the non-Hermitian part, and then uh, then you get these uh, states. This is my argument. Okay. And for numerics, it was analytics or calculations? No, no, no. This was numerical calculation, I believe, by Tim Liu. If I'm not mistaken. Okay, so, so this... this that's, not, that's not me, uh, by the way. My humble contribution hasn't started yet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. We also have a question from Kodo. Uh -huh. Yeah, hi. So I also I have a question from this slide. Uh, so about this uh, figure, I mean, you described this reservoir and condensate, the rainbow condensate. Mm -hmm. So this reservoir is the, I mean, it's a ring shaped pump. Is that? Yep. And this also corresponds to this reservoir above the plot? Uh, pardon. Uh, so the reservoir basically uh, has the same shape as the pumping. It is slow. It uh, it only diffuses, right? So it uh, it follows the same shape. It has the same uh, ring-like shape. Yeah. Yeah. As far as I know, so when uh, to create this con uh, platinum condensate, I think the the pump they excite like first like inactive reservoir which have like by high energy than this yeah yeah lower polariton branch yeah uh, I mean, so this reservoir and above plot is uh, is is it is it an active reservoir uh what do you mean by active uh, could you specify please so i mean i i as far as I know there is a two type of re reservoir so in this uh polariton condensate process uh -huh. So first, yeah, they excite the, the another reservoir sure. like way, yeah, way sure. higher, way above, way above the uh, way above this energy. So this uh, first initial excitation leaves in this in this picture. It it's way above an energy, and yeah, then yeah, yeah. eventually it relaxes yes, uh, yes. and forms. So by default, I mean this reservoir. So you you refer to it as active, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So basically, then again, uh, it also uh, has the same uh, the same shape uh, as the uh, as the pumping, with uh, yeah. in some approximation, of course. So it is certainly wider because of the diffusion, right? So while it relaxes in energy, it must also diffuse. Uh, but uh, they can uh, in experiment you can separate uh, emission from the reservoir, this incoherent mm -hmm. emission, and it is actually proved uh, proven that. It, it has the shape of the ring. So the first reservoir which is high energy, so yeah. it, it definitely has a ring shape and then the another reservoir you draw here and then it still have like ring shape, but it's like more diffused. So basically- uh, More like... diffused, but the, ah. but the shape is the same. Okay, 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 thanks. All right, so the interesting physics, I think starts here. Uh, 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 in 2015, uh, the group uh, laboratory in Cambridge, well, headed by J uh, Jeremy Baumberg uh, and uh, Hamita Hadi, who was uh, the actual experimentalist who showed this, uh, they uh, created, a, well, basically a very similar uh, optical trap 
uh, in this case, it uh, had a form of uh, a rectangle rather than uh, a, a ring. But anyway, the ground state uh, condensate forms uh, in this trap. And what they uh, discovered uh, is that uh, from uh, realization to realization of this uh, uh, condensate, uh, the spin polarization uh, of, uh, uh, of the emission and therefore of the condensate itself is randomly uh, chosen. If you find, fine tune it, uh, the probability is exactly 50%. So uh, they described it uh, as the most uh, energy efficient random number generating uh, 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 generator uh, in the world because the, uh, they estimated the energy of switching for this uh, system uh, uh, as uh, something of uh, nano electron volts. Uh, and then, uh, so why did it happen? That was explained by uh, Yura Rubo in a very elegant uh, manner in terms of uh, spinor gross pitayevsky equation, uh, right? The one, uh, the one you've seen uh, with an additional uh, birefringence term that splits the uh, linear polarization, uh, the two linear polarizations uh, that is due to the uh, crystal axis uh, present in this, uh, in this uh, membrane of gallium arsenide. Uh, and uh, this, uh, this equation can be in turn mapped uh, onto uh, the evolution equation for the pseudospinor S, uh, so this vector S, which is in fact uh, no longer, uh, whose uh, absolute value magnitude is no longer conserved because it's a non-Hermitian system. So it's lens, the lens of the vector shows the occupancy of the condensate and its direction corresponds to its spin structure. So from this equation, uh, it was shown that it has uh, above, with, uh, above a certain critical pumping power, uh, it has uh, two attractors uh, of equivalent, uh, uh, equivalent uh, attraction force uh, uh, that are uh, at uh, close to the uh, the positive pole and the negative pole uh, of the block uh, sphere. So, uh, Professor Nalitov, we have uh, two questions. Uh -huh. uh, so, Sergey Konyakin, uh, raise Great. the hand first, Great. please. Okay. So again, uh, the excita and uh, for excitation, uh, the polarization was linear. Uh, exit, uh, so polarization of excitation, in, in fact, doesn't matter doesn't here matter. because it's incoherent and it is lost while in this process of uh, energy relaxation. But uh, I think it was linear. Well, the, in um, some recent talk, which we yeah, have okay. had in, the, in, um, in our laboratory, uh, this uh, is true. The, okay, I get what you mean. Uh, yes, I think I think to exclude uh, the effect to exclude any symmetry breaking by external uh, external by the pumping, they pumped it with the linear polarization. I'm sure of that. Okay, okay, okay. Let, let us. Okay, it, it is okay. And I also have a question. So, uh, experimental realization implies only two possibilities: either sigma plus or sigma minus, and nothing intermediate. Uh, uh, yes, there are only two attractors. In fact, they are not precisely at the poles. You can see that they are close to the poles, but not exactly. You can see both components, right? In both cases, sigma minus and sigma plus, it's just that one is dominating, which means that you're somewhere close to either of the two poles. Mm -hmm. Yes, so okay. there are two, two, only two options. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And we have also a question from uh, Sergei Flach. Yeah, just a semantic question. You, so you call this uh, uh, equation uh, gross pitayevsky It doesn't have any uh, uh, spatial derivatives, right? So this is more like a, a dimer. It has two degrees of freedom which are coupled. Uh, yes, correct? true. So right. once, uh, once, once you project, uh, once you map the whole gross pitayevsky equation onto the basis, uh, of uh, two uh, spin states uh, where the condensate forms, of course, you get rid of the uh, of the energy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. 
of the kinetic right. energy and, term. And Thank you. Another just uh, uh, education question. You uh, previously you called this. Uh, maybe if you can go back one, one slide, or mm -hmm. maybe two. Yes, this one here again. So the reservoir you you basically call incoherent, but then you say this is uh, this is uh, essentially can be considered as some uh, uh, laser light uh, medium. If I may yeah, say, yeah, so. yeah, absolutely. But then uh, usually we learn that the laser light is quite coherent. So where's the incoherence coming in? Ah, so what, what's the best answer on that? The coherent part. Yeah, this is the this is the case. Yeah. Uh, this is the interesting part that that uh, the coherent part is separated specially. So the condensate itself is coherent, and it is. Uh, yeah, but the laser light is also usually somehow has some coherence, right? That's why it's called laser light. So, so what additional coherence do we need to make uh, to allow us to call the, the reservoir uh, incoherent? Reservoir. Well, the well, reservoir. You, 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 yes. Reservoir plays the role of the gain, as you, as you. Uh, know. Yes, but but uh, we can view it as some kind of uh, uh, laser light excited. Can we say that that this is kind of like a laser light? Yes, the, uh, yes. This is so, very so therefore there is some kind of coherence in that but is, um, I'm, I'm not sure so I <laughs> uh, I, uh, I uh, as in my understanding the coherent part is this uh, is in this condensate so this is really no, I understand I understand that this is uh, coherence and this is uh, a BEC and so on and so forth, but I'm just puzzled by myself because yes, laser light is not a Bose-Einstein condensate, but still it is also coherent. So what kind of additional coherence do we have to add uh, in order to get a BEC? Maybe we can discuss this later. Okay. Not yeah. to uh, stop your... Yeah, this is uh, a very interesting question. I don't know all the <laughs> answers, of course, but uh, then again, I, I should mention that uh, in the dichotomy between uh, Bose-Einstein condensates, uh, which are perfectly equilibrium, and the laser-like states, the opposite limit, uh, uh, that is perfectly in uh, uh, non-equilibrium. I, by default, mean uh, here all this uh, all this physics is the physics of a laser-like state. It's not a Bose-Einstein condensate. It's more similar to lasers than uh, Bose-Einstein condensate. Yeah, but laser light is coherent, isn't it? That's what makes it so nice. Uh, exactly, and uh, and I think that uh, in the so in the analogy between the lasers uh, and this uh, non-equilibrium condensation, the analogy is that the reservoir plays the role of the gain medium. Uh, so, like electrons in uh, uh, excited electrons in a crystal, right? And then uh, the emission or the emission of uh, optical emission from the condensate from the inside of the trap is coherent. So it forms due to stimulated scattering from the incoherent medium. This is my So the reservoir is not coherent. Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, can, can I have some, uh, some, some note? So uh, a reservoir becomes incoherent due to multiple scattering events. Uh, from the excited this electron hole plasma, which uh, then goes down to the reservoir. And yeah, the so, 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 so the best way to look at it as at the classical, some kind of classical uh, hot, uh, hot uh, gas of uh, quasi particles. And uh, the, it, it is, the emission from it is incoherent. And uh, this is the evidence that uh, it's really something like a classical gas. More, more than a wave, a wave function like state. Okay, thank you. Right. So uh, this is this is where my uh, my uh, contribution to the field actually begins. So I decided to apply similar uh, methods uh, to uh, slightly larger optical traps where the condensation uh, happens at the excited state rather than the ground, the ground state. And this excited state in a perfectly radial uh, uh, trap, it has the form, it is twice degenerate. And the two uh, states, the two excited states 
uh, occupied by the condensates are uh, quantum vortices. And uh, the, thanks to this uh, uh, talk two weeks ago, I think that uh, this uh, quantum vortices of, uh, of uh, accident polaritons uh, are not uh, so I don't have to uh, have to uh, describe them separately. And uh, the similarity is that once again, because it's a two level system, uh, the state of the, uh, so the condensate is uh, spread between the two, these two uh, vortices or it can take a, a superposition of them and uh, have this uh, dipole-like shape, right? Because if you combine two uh, vortices with uh, uh, angular momentum, momenta plus and minus one, you get this uh, linearly polar, linearly elongated uh, dipole states. Uh, but uh, in the basis of the two vortices, plus and minus, uh, clockwise and anti-clockwise, rotating uh, vortices, you can write, uh, you can once again uh, map the whole gross Pitayevsky equation onto this basis uh, to get uh, the, uh, finally the time dependent equation, non-Hermitian equation on the two components, the two coefficients before the two vortices, so psi plus and minus. And then you can project it, map it onto the equation on the uh, now effective pseudo spin which is related to the angular momentum rather than uh, spin polarization of the condensate. And this equation is slightly different. And uh, the behavior uh, of, uh, so the bifurcation, nonlinear behavior uh, in this case is slightly different. So here I uh, plotted the uh, occupancy and uh, vorticity, so projections of uh, this S uh, vector as uh, functions of the pumping power. And you can see that in, uh, there is a critical pumping power, non critical point of nonlinear bifurcation, where uh, a classical trivial, well, a trivial uh, dipole like state that basically uh, follows the symmetry of. Uh, a slight ellipticity of the trap. So it, I had to assume a slight ellipticity of the trap, which is anyway uh, present in these optical traps, uh, where uh, this state uh, loses stability, it becomes unstable. And uh, the only uh, stable fixed point above this critical pumping power uh, is uh, once again, either of the two attractors, uh, rotating clockwise or anti-clockwise, anti so closer to the uh, northern or southern poles of the block sphere, and at the same time, in the vicinity of uh, in the vicinity of this uh, critical point, uh, the x projection of the spin suddenly uh, uh, switches its sign, which is reflected in uh, sudden rotation of the uh, wave function by 90 degrees. That was actually observed in the experiment. Uh, and that was my motivation in the first place to, uh, to, explain, uh, to explain this uh, sudden uh, rotation of the wave function. Moreover, in uh, accounting for the two spin components, real spin uh, corresponding to a circular polarization of, uh, of light, uh, this uh, sudden rotation uh, results in uh, formation of uh, uh, spin patterns, this butterfly uh, spin pattern uh, that was also observed in, in the experiment and wrongly attributed to the effect of uh, optical spin hole effect, uh, so TATM splitting. So, uh, so in, in this model, it appears naturally in the range of powers where one component uh, is uh, switched by, is rotated by 90 degrees, and the other one is not. All right, so the next, uh, the next uh, step uh, for me was to extend uh, the same model, apply the same model uh, to uh, larger, even larger traps, uh, where uh, it is experimentally known uh, that instead of this low quantum number states, uh, the condensate 
uh, forms in uh, some kind of whispering gallery modes uh, close to in the vicinity uh, of the ring-like uh, uh, ring -like reservoir. So here in, in this picture, by the way, you can actually see uh, the both the incoherent emission of the uh, reservoir and the coherent uh, emission from the condensate. So it is uh, not fully uh, separated uh, in space, but uh, it is close to uh, uh, cl close to the reservoir instead. Uh, but uh, yeah, okay. So this uh, these states are in turn uh, described with uh, large uh, angular momentum numbers. We can judge by the angular momentum of this uh, condensate by the number of these petals. Uh, in this case, it's uh, uh, it's 22. In this case, well, I'm, I'm not sure, but uh, it's a uh, it's it, it's an integer number anyway. Uh, 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 and still, uh, in the case of perfectly uh, symmetric radial traps, uh, you are dealing with twice degenerate uh, degenerate uh, condens uh, uh, twice degenerate uh, state, uh, rotating clockwise or anticlockwise. Some uh, this kind of giant vortex. Uh, and uh, fortunately, the uh, the equation is actually very similar. It's just that the parameters uh, of this equation have to be calculated in a slightly different uh, different way. But otherwise, uh, it's uh, it's very similar. And uh, the first step for me was to uh, was to uh, find the analytical uh, explanation of the effect uh, that the angular uh, momentum of this uh, condensate. Uh, increases uh, via a cascade of uh, uh, transitions uh, with the size of the trap. Uh, interestingly, so uh, although this system is uh, linear, at least in the vicinity of the uh, of the condensation threshold, where nonlinear effects can be neglected, uh, it wasn't described analytically. There were uh, numerical simulations reproducing this uh, this shape, petaled petaled like shapes, but no analytics. Uh, and uh, it was actually not there, uh, not that difficult to uh, uh, come up with a model of a step like uh, e, a step like complex potential, non Hermitian potential, uh, uh, separating the whole. Uh, uh, two-dimensional plane into two regions where the reservoir uh, is either absent completely inside the trap and uh, present outside the trap. If we are only interested in the wave function, uh, wave function inside the trap, then we can uh, neglect uh, the finite widths of this uh, reservoir ring, right? And then uh, the two uh, wave functions inside this region and outside uh, of this region can be uh, piecewise defined in terms of Bessel functions and uh, McDonald function uh, and uh, connected at the point at the switching step uh, step point. So this results in an equation which can be solved. And uh, amazingly, uh, in this uh, this graph uh, of uh, uh, the pumping threshold for different modes, uh, with diff characterized with different angular momenta m uh, as uh, functions of the trap uh, size, uh, non-dimensionalized, uh, normalized uh, radius of the trap. Uh, uh, it indeed shows uh, that there is a, a cascade of uh, transitions uh, with uh, successively increasing, uh, subsequently increasing uh, uh, angular momenta. Moreover, uh, uh -huh. yep. excuse me. <laughs> yes, we have a question from Sergei Flach. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm just wondering, uh, maybe I, I missed this point. Why, why is it important to separate uh, uh, the, the uh, reservoir from the condensate uh, in space? Uh, why is it important? You uh, if I understand correctly, you uh, maybe I'm, I'm reading something wrong here. So in these pictures, uh, B, for instance, you were saying that still you have these whispering gallery modes, but still the condensate is not overlapping uh, with the uh, uh, pumping region or the, the reservoir uh, 
All right. Right. Uh, so so All let right. me bring. So now my, now my, my question is: Why do you want? To, why, why is that important? Okay. Uh, I would say, simply put, uh, the coherence time uh, of uh, the condensate depends on the overlap. Uh, co coherence of the condensate is depends on the overlap with the incoherent system. Obviously, if you overlap the two systems one of which is coherent and one of them is incoherent, it affects the coherence, uh, coherence time. Uh, and if, uh, if the pumping is uh, uh, either has the Gaussian uh, shape, Gaussian shape, and where the condensate over, strongly overlaps, or, uh, or uniform shape, where uh, the condensate overlaps with the reservoir, it uh, affects its coherence. So normally, if you want to study a coherent physics, you want to uh, separate these two. Parts. I see. Now, in this uh, example B, for instance, uh, what, what are the length scales which we see here? Uh, it's always tens of micrometers. Uh, I mean, is it much larger than the previous one where you were? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. so yes. how much larger? What, what, are we, what are the numbers? Mm. Okay, so it's uh, it's a bad idea of uh, not indicating the actual uh, numbers, especially when you okay. Uh, uh, let I'm I'm not going to speculate. I'm afraid, but uh, uh, it's always in the range of tens of micrometers. Of that, I'm sure. So from ten to one hundred. So less less than uh, one order of magnitude. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I, yes, I also have a question. Mm -hmm. So can you please maybe repeat or maybe explain, well, if, well, repeat if I have missed, what is the meaning of PT uh, in, the, in the plot uh, in the middle of your slide? Mm -hmm. So it's the pumping threshold. It's the critical point of, uh, uh, critical point of condensation. Uh, so you can solve this linear equation okay. on the critical critical pumping powers, and you can compare these critical pumping powers for different angular momentum modes. Obviously, okay. in the in actual experimental conditions, uh, the mode that has the lowest pumping power uh, threshold is the mode that is ignited first. So it, it's, the, it, it's the most that, uh, it's the mode that uh, condenses first. And then uh, the, rest, uh, the rest is defined by the nonlinear equation. And then it turns out that the global minimum of this, uh, this uh, set of uh, thresholds, uh, it experiences a cascade of, uh, of uh, switches uh, due to, uh, in fact, uh, due to transition from the confined state uh, to the state that is non uh, non confined. Now, this graph is given for a specific uh, value of the parameter alpha to beta. That is the uh, ratio of the Hermitian to non Hermitian parts of this condensate with condensate interaction term with the reservoir. And uh, interestingly, if you allow this parameter to change, uh, you can plot the exhaustive phase diagram uh, of uh, the uh, condensate angular momentum depending on this, uh, non, uh, this uh, non-dimensional parameter alpha to beta and the non-dimensional uh, dimensionless uh, trap size. And it fully exhaustively uh, describes uh, the physics of the system in the, uh, in the linear regime, at least. So there are no free parameters. And uh, this uh, happens rarely in, in modern physics. So if you keep the number of parameters to the minimum, uh, then you can potentially fully describe a system still. It, it apparently it hasn't been done, so uh, uh, that's uh, that's the graph that shows that indeed with increasing trap size uh, there is always a cascade of this uh, transition uh, increasing the angular momentum. 
All right. Uh, so now extending uh, extending this linear model uh, uh, to the nonlinear region where interactions start playing a significant role, uh, and thoroughly uh, thoroughly analyzing the stability uh, of the condensate, uh, we realized that. Uh, uh, depending on the parameters, namely here uh, the condensate condensate interaction and the condensate reservoir effective interactions. So the parameters that are related to at least uh, to these two effects, there may be different uh, scenarios of how the trivial petal state uh, loses its stability. Uh, it can happen, uh, uh, most importantly, it can happen via. Uh, the un undrawn of hope uh, scenario where a fixed point first uh, transforms into a limit cycle. So the petal states, the petal state starts oscillating in, uh, in time. And for some parameters that are uh, shown with the dashed uh, hatched uh, 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 area here, where the two interactions are not very far from each other. Uh, there is a range of pumping powers close to in the vicinity of this critical point of transition to a vortex state where the only stable, uh, the only stable state in the system is a limit cycle. So it has no other options other, to, other than uh, to follow uh, this uh, closed path uh, uh, paths uh, uh, in the uh, space of uh, S vectors. I would say on the block sphere, but it's not exactly sphere because the length of the vector can also be uh, be changed. Uh, yes, so there is this gray range of uh, limit cycle instability, and this is how it looks like. So it, it's once again, a fully analytical solution also rarely happens. Uh, and uh, it was confirmed with a full numerical uh, simulation of the gross pitayevsky equation. So that's in the uh, narrow range of uh, parameters, uh, you can see this uh, space time ordered state, which, uh, which for some reason oddly resembles uh, the so-called uh, time crystals or space time crystals. It is not correct to call uh, call them that, but uh, at least uh, at least the state resembles a special temporal ordered system. And uh, then, with a further increasing of the pumping power, uh, uh, this uh, limit cycle states or uh, or a fixed uh, fixed point uh, state uh, eventually transforms into a vortex, which was also confirmed uh, with numerical simulation. All right. So if there are no more, no, more, no questions on the single uh, single trap uh, part, I would like to, uh, yes. I, there have, is one. I have a question. So uh, okay. is the bogolubov dejan equations uh, used here or not? Yes. Yes. yes, yes. So to study the stability uh, of uh, uh, of the state, you apply Bogolubov the uh, 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 method. You work out the excitations of uh, the excitation spectrum of the uh, of the linear uh, of the linear state, or let's say of a fixed point. And if it happens uh, that uh, the energy of uh, the excitation has a positive imaginary part, uh, then this excitation corresponds to an exponentially growing uh, fluctuation, which overcomes, so the state becomes unstable. Yeah. Well, yes, uh, but, uh, uh, and this, uh, this uh, uh, eigenvalues of bogolubov dejan equation, they have uh, either uh, real or imaginary part, or they can have both real both. and imaginary parts. Both, 
both yeah both real so what matters for the stability analysis is the imaginary part if the if it's positive then uh, then the state is unstable okay and is it true that real that the real part of this uh, eigenvalue of bogolubov degen equation corresponds with the oscillation frequency of um, of your of your ring condensate or not no this is not the case uh, in the whole range of the limit cycle instability uh, in this whole range so i would say that the answer the full answer is that uh, clo close to the instability point uh, this initial value of frequency is um, my guess is yes uh, that uh, it is related to the um, to the to the some somehow perhaps not directly related to the real part of the uh, excitation energy maybe maybe some kind of splitting of the two uh, excitation energies matters here so not directly the energy it should be some splitting but i'm not sure exactly it's an interesting question Okay. okay. All right. So as I see, uh, there is little time for the final part, uh, and uh, perhaps I uh, I can still uh, accelerate uh, and oh, cover it. You you can take ten minutes. Uh, we had uh, lots of questions. Is, is okay. ten minutes good? Yeah. 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 Great. I'll try okay. to I'll try to manage. All right. So now let's extend uh, the idea of a single trap optical optically trapped condensate to a lattice. Let's uh, arrange uh, a system of coupled, uh, coupled traps. That's what uh, Hamita Hadi and his colleagues uh, uh, in Cambridge did. Uh, and uh, they uh, realized that uh, now uh, the spins of uh, uh, condensates in individual traps are, uh, are related. So they are coupled. And depending on the uh, on the parameters, namely on the distance between the traps, uh, you can uh, arrange uh, different kinds uh, of spin order in this uh, in this uh, system, uh, resembling a ferromagnetic order where all spins are aligned, or anti-ferromagnetic order when the adjacent spins are anti-aligned. And uh, uh, this was. Uh, so this is where it becomes, uh, this system becomes uh, promising from the point of view of simulating uh, interacting spin uh, chains or uh, spin lattices. And uh, this effect was explained uh, this time in terms of uh, a system of uh, coupled uh, spinor gross pitayevsky equations. I'm calling it, I'm still calling it gross pitayevsky because it originates from it, right? But then you, of course, map, you first map uh, each, uh, each equation for each condensate uh, onto its uh, uh, basis state, which is the ground state of each individual trap uh, in, in a similar manner, uh, like in the tight binding model, right? And then you describe the whole system in terms of uh, N uh, complex numbers that have the physical meaning of wave functions of uh, uh, individual condensates. And then they are coupled. Uh, they assume that this coupling is uh, it, it has the physical meaning of tunneling by, by default. So it's uh, uh, called, well, you can treat it either uh, as either Josephson coupling or li literally tunneling of uh, polaritons. And then uh, this, was, uh, this exper experiment was reproduced in theory. At that time, uh, I was interested in uh, topological uh, physics of uh, exciton polaritons, uh, which happens in uh, honeycomb lattices of microcavities, uh, which is why I applied uh, and tried to solve this system in the case of a honeycomb, uh, honeycomb lattice uh, of such uh, uh, traps. And uh, we, with uh, Helby Sigurdsson, who did the numerical simulation, uh, that uh, there are there is a whole range of uh, station stable states, including a ferromagnetic coupling, uh, where all spins are aligned, uh, anti-ferromagnetic coupling, 
and some intermediate states uh, that we refer to as dipole states uh, and striped phases. And uh, we uh, plotted uh, the phase uh, diagram of this system depending on uh, the two parameters, uh, the tunneling uh, constant, uh, J normalized, uh, non-dimensionalized, uh, and uh, the pumping power. So for a fixed value of this uh, tunneling constant, you always get uh, uh, the, the, uh, the same scenario. First, uh, you start with an uncondensed system, then uh, the system is, uh, you form the condensate, which uh, inherits the, uh, the, the trivial uh, symmetry of the bioregions regions of the crystal. And then depending on uh, the, uh, the horizontal axis value, you end up with uh, a phase transition to one of the four uh, of the four spin ordered uh, states. And then if you further increase uh, pumping power, uh, you uh, create uh, uh, and increase uh, the effective uh, field, effective magnetic field in this system uh, due to uh, spin and isotropic interactions. So effective uh, magnetic field that is capable of replacing real magnetic fields uh, in the real magnetic field in the direction normal to the plane of the microcavity. And uh, we know that such magnetic fields are capable of creating topologically non-trivial uh, spectra of, uh, of uh, well, well, photonic spectra, for polyritonic spectra. And we decided to uh, plot the spectra of uh, excitation for this uh, coherent synchronized uh, condensate uh, and uh, uh, study its, uh, uh, its topology, topology of this spectrum uh, calc by calculating uh, its uh, uh, topological invariance, namely Chern, uh, Chern numbers. So for these four phases, all four phases, with further increasing uh, value of magne effective magnetic field delta, uh, you end up uh, opening a, uh, an, a gap uh, in the energy dispersion of uh, excitations obtained with bogolubov uh method. But uh, it is the case of the uh, ferromagnetic coupling states where all spins are aligned and by the way chosen spontaneously on top of that just like in the case of uh, single trap uh, spin bifurcations uh, uh, only in this case uh, uh, this gap uh, in the excitation spectrum is topologically non-trivial meaning that uh, there are non-zero churn numbers, band chain numbers characterizing the spectra, and uh, meaning that uh, there are topologically protected uh, edge states uh, at the boundary, at the edges of uh, the finite size uh, lattice. Moreover, uh, in the general case, in, in some cases at least, uh, of, uh, there are, uh, there is a, well, uh, there is a cascade of topological transitions corresponding to uh, integer to uh, changing integer uh, uh, band uh, chern numbers. And uh, then uh, the next uh, natural uh, step uh, was to uh, try to couple uh, slightly larger step uh, uh, traps uh, where uh, the condensate is formed in the excited uh, excited state rather than the ground state. Uh, and we expected uh, some uh, a certain kind of uh, vorticity coupling in chains of lattices uh, of uh, these uh, um, traps, uh, similarly to coupling of spins. Uh, but we soon realized that the actual mechanism of uh, coupling uh, was not uh, was not properly studied analytically, uh, and uh, we uh, realized that it is uh, strongly spin and isotropic. Uh, spin in the sense of pseudospin, pseudospin and isotropic. Uh, and uh, we, uh, it is, uh, first of all, it is described in terms of dissipative coupling. So an imaginary uh, term added to the, uh, to the real coupling parameter J. And on top of that, there are 
there should be uh, two parameters, I, uh, plus, j plus or minus and i plus or minus corresponding to uh, conserving to, well, in the case of j, I would say uh, corresponding to uh, conserving of angle of momentum uh, during the, uh, during the uh, polariton jump from between the two traps and uh, j minus corresponding to angular momentum flipped, uh, ton, uh, uh, angular momentum flipping during uh, during tunneling between the two traps. Uh, in the case of I, uh, this analogy is not uh, directly directly valid because there is no tunneling, but the symmetry symmetry wise, uh, there must be two corresponding components, I uh, plus or minus. And these components, uh -huh. so first of all, we had to, uh, we had to properly address the delta functional uh, delta functional uh, model uh, for the, uh, the the trap uh, to properly uh, uh, to get the proper functions of the condensate outside of the trap because the the actual mechanism of this dissipative coupling is that the vanishing uh, tail of the wave function in one condensate overlaps with the reservoir of the of the other of the other uh, trap and uh, for to, to properly study uh, this we had to uh, work out the wave function of the uh, uh, condensate outside the trap first we applied the uh, uh, delta functional model for the for the reservoir and interestingly once again recovered uh, the cascade, uh, this cascade of transitions with this model as well. So it only it also works in in this uh, in this case, uh, which is uh, uh, and you can also work out the uh, exhaustive uh, uh, exhaustive phase diagram similar to uh, the step-like potential case uh, for uh, for the, for the angular momentum as function of trap radius and uh, the uh, interaction parameter. And finally, this is almost the final slide. Uh, finally, we computed these uh, coupling parameters, uh, I plus and minus, and realized that uh, depending on uh, the, rash, uh, the, uh, the relation between these two parameters and on their signs, uh, the, in the case of coupling of two, just two uh, uh, polariton traps, uh, you, optical traps for, for condensates, uh, you can get a coupled state uh, that is similar to sigma and pi bonds of, uh, of uh, electron orbitals in uh, molecules. So this is why we called it polariton molecules. Uh, and uh, this analytical, uh, analytical uh, calculation was also confirmed in uh, numerics thanks to, uh, uh, thanks to Helge Sigurdsson. And then you can extend the same the same result to larger molecules uh, such as this benzene hexagon uh, hexagon molecule. So of course I emitted uh, many more uh, effects uh, in uh, in this system, such as topology of uh, non-Hermitian uh, spectra and so-called exceptional or diabolical points. Uh, and uh, things like uh, study of quantum cha chaos uh, in uh, traps that uh, have uh, the shape of Sinai, Sinai billiard, uh, published by Elena Strovska's group in Nature, and uh, also X, uh, X, y, uh, X, y, the idea of XY model simulation in, uh, in lattices of, uh, of condensates uh, uh, that was proposed by Pavel Slobodakis and Natalia Birlova. And with this, I would like to thank you for your attention uh, and uh, thank, uh, thank all my uh, wonderful uh, co-authors and colleagues. Uh, and I would be uh, glad to answer your questions if there are any left. Thank you, Professor Nalitov. Let us thank uh, our speaker. And uh, we have time for questions. Uh, perhaps I can start with a very naive question. So um, to, to get these exciton polaritons uh, that uh, you presented, uh, you needed uh, two-dimensional electron gases, right? 
is there a way to get a 3D kind of uh, exit on polaritons? Um, uh, uh, yes and no, you can get uh, polaritons in 3D uh, given, uh, given strong, uh, extremely strong coupling of, uh, uh, of photonic modes with uh, excitations of crystals, that is excitons, for example, but you cannot, uh, you cannot make them condense. Uh, that's the property of, in the case of equilibrium system, Bose-Einstein uh, condense, actually, no. Uh, I, was, I was starting to say that and I, I realized that it's the opposite. Uh, Bose-Einstein condensate is possible in 3D and impossible on the other hand in, in, the, in the 2D, unless it's a confined system. I uh, do not know uh, of any experimental realizations of 3D uh, accident polariton condensates, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. But uh, so it's theoretically possible <laughs> for now, or? It's a good question, actually. No. Um, I, to, to be absolutely honest, I don't know. Mm. Okay, thank you. Uh, maybe we... uh, I, I have a comment, maybe uh, at, at least, but but to imagine how to to approach to three D polariton condensates, we should uh, of course do uh, thinking of reducing the uh, or but but uh, no reducing but uh, uh, making larger polariton lifetime to allow the laser radiation to penetrate the the sample well. Uh, uh, yes, this is true, but in principle, you can uh, reach the same effect by increasing the Rabi splitting or increasing the interaction of uh, the medium with, uh, uh, with light. So you, it, it's always, you can either uh, decrease the losses or you can increase, uh, decrease, well, de you can either uh, increase the Q factor, decrease the lifetime, uh, or increase the coupling strengths of the two uh, modes to reach the same effect. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, and we have a question also from Kodo. Yeah. Uh, so here, I mean, still about this ring shape pump. Is it Lagerro Gaussian pump? Uh, uh, you mean, uh, does it have uh, an angular momentum uh, in it? Yeah, yeah, for example, yes. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that uh, this was the case. So they rather used the mask uh, to, uh, to shape the profile of the excitation, but uh, they didn't want to, uh, uh, to, in, uh, to uh, imprint uh, externally uh, any angular momentum into the system. But actually oh, okay. this is only, to, to be, uh, to be uh, uh, the full answer is that later they actually experimented with uh, Laguerre Gaussian uh, 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 excitation as well. And, mm -hmm. and uh, you're, uh, you're right, they, uh, they showed that uh, the probability of uh, different vortex uh, uh, states depends uh, on the uh, direction on the vorticity of the angular momentum. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But here, just like oh, you don't consider the angular here momentum. Here, you don't the need it. Yes. So oh, okay. if if we describe the reservoir in terms of its uh, uh, of its uh, density and r, uh, this model completely neglects any kind of vorticity in the reservoir. Mm -hmm. Uh, so this model corresponds to the case where uh, there, there is no vorticity and it is lost in any way. And to account for the vorticity in the reservoir, you have to use a more sophisticated model. All right, all right. Well, could you show me the slide again? I still have questions. Yes. So about this the effective potential, the black curve, I guess. Mm -hmm. And then yep. this blue curve, blue and red shows the different state of the condensate, right? Uh, a subtlety. 
uh, different states of uh, exciton polariton single particle spectrum. Oh, okay. So you have a you have a trap, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can find its uh, single particle spectrum, but then mm -hmm. the condensate chooses one of these uh, discrete state uh, discrete yeah, 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 yeah. states to condense. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, for example, with this pump diameter, I see the five. I mean, there is a five different options for the yes. condensate. But for example, if you increase the this diameter, and then do you think we uh, you can find like more different state or uh, more? Uh, yeah. Well, yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. You you get states uh, with uh, higher uh, quantum numbers, mm -hmm. and oh, okay. in the limit of very large traps, instead yeah, yeah, yeah. instead of this, you get. Uh, just one quantum number that is the angular momentum so the condensate always falls into this uh, uh whispering gallery modes with uh, described with angular momentum and mm -hmm. i also i also heard like to create this polariton condensate i think the pump intensity is quite important so but i also always wonder uh, for example in experiment like how to find the pumping ratio for, for example they just like uh, keep changing the pump intensity and then they just found some pump threshold from that, from that or there is like some uh, method to calculate the pumping threshold. Uh, it, it, yes, well, uh, this talk was uh, largely about the, uh, the, the, about this idea that you can take the linear system. Okay. Uh, 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 so get rid, omit all uh, interaction terms in the gross pitayevsky equation, make it a Schrodinger equation, uh -huh. uh, and, uh, but a non-Hermitian uh, non one with gain and losses. And then you can diagonalize it, uh, find the energies of, uh, of the states, uh, and uh, as functions of the pumping power, and uh, once you uh, once you reach the pumping power where at least one of these states has a positive uh, imaginary energy part, then you mm -hmm. end up with the condensate. Ah, okay, okay. And I also have a last question. So <laughs> again, about the same slide. Uh, which one? The one before that, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, first I, I ask about this, like the ring shape reservoir. And uh, so you, you use like the continuous wave pump, right? Yes, uh, uh, I'm not an experimentalist. I should have uh, stated it in the, fir in the first place. I'm yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. They, yeah. they, so, they did use a, a CW pumping, yeah. I mean, but when you solve this cross pitv equation, you also consider the pump as continuous wave. Yeah. Pump. Uh, yes, uh, this is actually uh, stated in the very beginning of uh, of this model. So I should have mentioned it as well. Uh, here, uh, there is uh, there is this pumping term, which is a constant, uh, and it is a constant pumping term, uh, increasing the uh, density of the uh, of the reservoir. Yes. So by default, it is uh, the CW incoherent pumping is assumed here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, actually, I'm my so my question actually is more e experimental things. Actually. Yes. So my, my first question, yeah, yeah way, way before, is like, uh, I mean, you were showing, I mean, so I, I'm not experimentalist, so I I have no idea, but you were mentioning about this re this reservoir. So, so first the pump is like excited like with really high energy or above then. Mm -hmm. uh, the lower polariton branch, mm -hmm. and then when it scatter down to the this uh, yellow reservoir yeah. above plot, so by scattering or some relaxation, and then you said this diffusion happened, and then yes. this has like different shape of the reservoir as yep. before. Uh, but how do they find the? I mean, is it like the the diffusion is big to see from the I mean eye or something like compared to the pump like they excite they use first how do they distinguish them uh, well i would say that they don't care 
as they long as they, as long as they can uh, witness the incoherent emission from this uh, reservoir ring, they can mm. measure its uh, width and they can measure the radius, right? And they know that uh, the uh, radius of the uh, reservoir uh, trap is related to uh, uh, to the radius of the pumping ring. Oh, okay. Okay. So they can control mm -hmm. this. Uh, it is not exactly the same uh, as the radius of the pumping ring and the width is different, but uh, they can anyway, they have the handle over it, let's say, and they can independently measure the parameters of the reservoir. All right, all right. Okay, then thank you for the, all my questions. Thank you. Are there any more? Yes, I have a question. Can you move, please, to the end of your presentation, maybe to the, your last slide? Mm -hmm. Just, uh, you have mentioned that uh, the coupling constant between uh, uh, the sides is defined. Yes, well, here, the, this, uh, yes, yes, uh, this J parameter depends yeah. on the, uh, on the wave function outside one trap and the yeah. uh, reservoir of a neighboring trap. Uh, mm -hmm. But why not uh, uh, not uh, of the uh, of the relative phase of wave functions uh, in between the traps? Uh -huh. Um, and uh, in any way, I also, in, in some sense, a reservoir is, uh, is some entity without, uh, without phase. It is, it is not coherent. So how we compare the phase of wave function in one uh, right. trap and uh, maybe phase uh, of a reservoir uh, of neighboring trap? Uh, precisely, precisely right. So what happens in... Uh, in real life it is rather described as follows. Uh, the, the vanishing tail of uh, one wave function interferes with uh, the wave function uh, in the opposite trap. Uh, depending on this, on the relative phase and relative spins uh, configurations of the two functions, you can end up with constructive or destructive interference at, uh, at the, uh, most importantly, at uh, the region of space where the uh, reservoir is localized. And if uh, the uh, interference is mostly uh, constructive, then you end up with a wave function that is that has higher density in the region of the reservoir. So this wave function uh, is then characterized by the higher overlap of the state of the condensate with the reservoir. And if the overlap is higher, then it means that uh, the gain is higher and this state is more likely to be condensed. And this is the main mechanism of the choice of the configuration and the relative phase, by the way, between the two uh, condensates. Okay, so we consider the overlap of three of three objects: yeah. uh, first wave function, second wave function, and also the uh, overlap with the profile the of, uh, of reservoir. Yes, this is more correct, more correct way to put it. Okay, thank you. Thank you for clarification. Uh, okay, do we have any other questions from the audience? I can I see the slide once again, the the, the, first, the slide that I like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, do you mind if I I mean I just want to read about this paper uh, it's written. So do you mind if I just capture this slide? Uh, well, I mean, sure, uh, and moreover, yeah, right. it's, it's recorded. Yeah, oh, really, okay. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I really like this topic, so I would like to read about this paper so much. Please do, please do. Yeah, all right, thank you so much. I, I did. <laughs> okay, uh, so anyone else wants to take some snapshots? Or... 
Um, okay, so um, if there are no further questions, uh, let us thank Professor Nalitov uh, for his uh, very nice presentation and uh, for answering all the uh, interesting yeah. questions. Thank you. And uh, with this, yes, uh, we conclude our uh, seminar.